I'm interested that you you told the party that e each and every member should start learning an indigenous African language. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting symbolic effort, but do you think that is enough to reach out to these black voters whom you want but you don't now have? Of course it's not enough. It's a very small component. What we have to do is show people across lines of ethnicity and race that we really care for each other. That caring for another person is not a function of your skin color. You can passionately care about another person even though he or she has a very different culture, background, religion, or set of beliefs because we want this country to work and we want it to be a democracy. Of course, the ANC would simply point to their cabinet. They'd point to people like Trevor Manuel. They'd point to people like Alec Irwin, who we had on our program passionately defending the ANC's record not so very long ago. These are white men at the top of the ANC, in government, making crucial decisions. Why do you insist that for the ANC everything is viewed through the prism of race? Because transformation has displaced almost any other goal in government racial transformation, racial head counting. That's why we've had a collapse of service delivery at almost every level of government, because racial transformation has become the overriding goal, not service delivery and not a uh, determination, for example, to improve the quality of education or deal with the criminal justice system. Racial transformation is the number one goal, racial head counting, quotas, irrespective of any outcomes. But of course, transformation is what this country needs. Transformation is about alleviating the poverty of pretty much half the population of this country who still, according to the government's own figures, do live in poverty. 40% jobless, almost all of them black. That's the transformation that the ANC is trying to deliver. Well, that's what you think it is trying to deliver. It depends on how you define the word transformation. Our definition of transformation is to deal with the underlying causes of poverty and underdevelopment address those and transform this country through the policies of the Open Opportunity Society, we don't see transformation as putting political friends and cronies in top jobs, irrespective of skills and believing that delivery and change will follow. But poverty alleviation, you've said, indeed you said it when you first took the job of Mayor of Cape Town, was your number one priority. But then I look at your record and I find that the ANC claim they had a plan to build 22 thousand new housing units in Cape Town and when you came into power you cut that to 12,000 at a time when housing units for black people are desperately needed. They had a plan to build 22,000 housing units. I don't think they built 2,000 and that's the huge difference. Between you've, cut, you've cut the plan almost in no, half. We've said what is feasible given the decimation of the skills base of the city because of racial transformation and the obsession therewith. This city was stripped of most of its management skills, its engineering skills, its technical skills, by an ANC administration obsessed with racial transformation. Then they had all kinds of targets which were totally unmeetable and no skills to even spend half their capital budgets. That is the contradiction of the ANC's version of transformation. Affirmative action. Mm -hmm. They use it in the United States. Mm -hmm. The ANC, ANC wants to use it here. Mm -hmm. And they said in this city that they would like to use affirmative action to make sure that procurement contracts given out by the city go to small black businesses first and foremost. Mm -hmm. What is wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with that. That is the reality. But you've stopped doing it. No, we've actually done it much better. That is the ANC's rhetoric. Let's look at the reality. The reality was that most contracts, big contracts, were given to friends and people who had high political contacts. We are finding all of that out now with our forensic audits, which are throwing up some very interesting results. The ANC's version of affirmative action is manipulating outcomes and is purely a fig leaf for ensuring high office or good contracts for political contacts. Our version is completely different and much more effective. We believe in opening access, of ensuring opportunity much more broadly, of running a fair, transparent process, of not favoring political cronies, and our outcomes are much better. In fact, in the last year in Cape Town, the contracts awarded to BEE-compliant firms have that's risen. black economic empowerment. That's right. Black economic empowerment compliant firms has risen under the Democratic Alliance because we've opened access not try to manipulate outcomes. See, here we sit with you telling me that you want to reach out to black voters, and thus far your message has been 
that the black politicians running this city and indeed running this country are involved in cronyism, pretty much you've implied corruption, that they have a wrong-headed analysis of where South Africa needs to go. And yet, you're telling me you want to reach out to the black community, where the ANC is still regarded as the party of the liberation struggle, the party that delivered freedom for black people. You're assuming that black people are stupid. You're assuming that if people run an administration the way the ANC ran this one, that black people will say, well, that's fine. That's OK that we're not getting any service delivery just because black people are failing. They don't think like that. The ANC does not own black people. Black people, especially poor black people, want service delivery. They want skills. They want efficiency. And they want opportunities. And if black people are failing to deliver those, they're not going to say forever, well, we're going to go with it simply because we are owned by the liberation struggle. That's I'm not suggesting that, but I am suggesting that they look at their country. They see consistent growth rates of between 4 and 5%. They see a stable economy. They see a South African and they see uh, corporate themselves sector not which can play on the world it. stage. They see themselves not benefiting from it. That is the critical thing. And the transition can have a graph that goes quickly upwards, but failure to deliver a skills base through falling education, which is the greatest tragedy of the new South Africa, won't keep that graph going upwards. You see, you think, or you say, black economic empowerment as run by the ANC isn't working. Absolutely. Take the example of a man we've just spoken to on this program, Tokyo Sefwale. Mm -hmm. He has become very wealthy as a result of black economic empowerment, but he has also found jobs for 65,000 South Africans, largely black South Africans. Is that not the way to deliver long-term growth and prosperity to this country. Let us look very carefully at what black economic empowerment has been in government. I'm very interested that you use the example of Mr. Sekhwale, because he is a billionaire, multi-billionaire in South Africa, and good luck to him. He's done it well, and he's a very you're good You're surely not man. against people making of money. Of course I'm not, but let me give you the example I'm trying to come to. This government under the AIDS NC administration in Cape Town had prime land, prime coastal land that they wanted to get rid of to ensure a major upmarket housing development to bring in money to the state's coffers. In the tender process, they gave Mr. Tokyo Sekhwale's bid a 35 million rand discount on the grounds that it was BEE compliant. Now, they gave one of the richest men in South Africa a 35 million rand discount when they should have sold that land to the highest bidder so that we had 35 million rand more to deliver services to the poor. And that's the equity that the DA is talking about. 